All right. Today's show is brought to you by Jen's Poshmark Closet. High-end clothing at super low prices. You can say bargain basement prices. The in the closet. And in the basement, right? I'm in my workspace. Yep, I'm in the Poshmark basement. All right. So if you ever need some really good high-end clothing at really good prices, it's a way to save money. I'm telling you. Go up to Jen's Poshmark page. We will put the link in the description, or you can go to our website right below the play button. Click on that link. It'll take you right to Jen's closet. But are we ready, Jen? We're so ready. All right. Let's get on with the show. How do I share it on Facebook? Welcome to Two 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 Paranormal Podcast, coming to you from six feet under Toledo, Ohio. We have a special guest tonight. We are doing something a little different because we are snowed in. Jen is at her house. Our cousin Rodney is down south in Virginia. He's, yeah, there he is, right below us there. Joe and Joe and me. So welcome to the show, everyone, and welcome Rodney. Cousin Rodney's in the house. How are you? I, I, I'm fine with that intro, with that music. I feel like I'm in WWE or something. Yeah, bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back in my energy, I would have done that. <laughs> yeah. That is that sliver by the band Dead in Five. Oh, nice. Yeah, you want some Detroit yeah. rock and roll. Detroit? Why not? No kiss? No kiss? What, what, no. No. We, we play real Detroit rock and roll. Well. <laughs> Okay. Oh. I mean, Kiss is from Detroit, but come on, they play the song no, back. They're, not, they're from New York. Are they? Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. I See? Know. No, you yeah. don't. <laughs> What's so happening? How is, so, how is my cousins doing? Doing okay. We're, we're, we're snowed in, but we're good. We're yeah. Good. Yeah. We, we got, like I said, we got some rain, and that's it right now. I, I I know a big storm is kicking. Do you think the weather affects paranormal activity? Yes, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. You think it goes high during snowstorms? <laughs> I, I I think the energy in the atmosphere really does play a big factor in paranormal and the mm -hmm. happenings. So uh, first off, let me ask: Can I swear on your show? <sighs> Rodney, you can do anything you want on our show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I just have to make sure because I know some shows, you know, people are like, yeah, oh, man, ease up with the words. Ease yeah, just, just don't go like some of these shows where they go out of their way to use the F-bomb. No, I don't go out of my way. I, it, it, it just flows. It just naturally <laughs> flows. <laughs> I've been told that a lot that I, I'm, uh, you know, a lot of these old timers I, I've grown up with, and you know, I know now they're like, gosh, I've known people you could tell that they were really trying to put a cuss word in there, but <laughs> you, that's just part of your vocabulary. Vocabulary. <laughs> it's a southern drawl. Yeah. Right. Um, so what's, what's been going on? You you yeah. do anything new? You are you ghost hunting? Is the group well, back together? Well, uh, well, it, to me, oh, 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 so many questions. Just so many questions. Just, just answer them all. Okay. <laughs> Let me see. First off, no, we we have a well, we did a investigation last summer. Uh, there was a lady uh, that what intrigued me about it. She sent me a photo of a shadow person. Hmm. Now that is one thing I've never been able to catch capture on video the whole time i've investigated was a shadow person i mean it was solid yeah and so when i and i didn't even go and do a pre-investigation or nothing like that i just said we'll be there blah 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 i called everybody up we went there and i was like oh my god what a shit dog oh my <laughs> god what did i get us into 
I mean, this place, it, it didn't even look like it was safe enough to even go into. That's yeah. Trash and everything. But, it, you know, it was good getting everybody back together for a little while. They liked that, even if we just sitting around not really doing anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, since the pandemic, and plus where I had a heart attack last March, um, I, I've kind of, you know, just been staying home. You know, I, I, I can't take a chance. The doctor told me straight up with my diabetes and all the other health issues I got when the uh, pandemic started, uh, told me straight up, you catch it, you'll die. Yeah. Oh, okay. he, he, he said, your body won't be able to fight it. Okay. So I, I, I've been hiding, wearing masks when I do just drive around. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, look like one of them sickos with you on the mask I had up. You know, it used to be, used to be against the law to wear a mask. Now yeah. You need to wear a mask around mm -hmm. here. But I know. Every I time I wear one, I, I go into a store, I feel like, oh, they're going to think I'm going to rob them. <laughs> yeah. Or I actually, I, I actually had to go into a convenience store right by my house uh, a couple miles down. It's been a few months ago. And I wear a mask when I do go in anywhere. And, I, you know, no one behind the counter was wearing a mask. Uh, uh, the customers coming in went wearing a mask, and here a big old boy walks in. And he said, Look at that pussy with that mask on. <laughs> I said, You know what? At least I'm gonna be alive when you get this shit. You're gonna be dead, so fuck you, you know. Oh my god, oh my god, who says that to shit to people? Come on, <laughs> yep, yeah, strange times, strange things going on here. It, it is, there's a lot of. Especially in our area, a lot yeah. of hate, a lot of hate, a lot of people won't wear a mask. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, people die. I know I've I've had two cousins die from it. Oh my gosh! You know, two. Uh, let me see, a second and a third cousin, and they just flat out said, "I ain't wearing no mask." Yeah, it's a whole bunch of government bullshit. <laughs> uh, now they're pushing up daisies. Yeah. yeah. Have any of them um, tried to make themselves known or or come in, uh, make their presence known to you? Since they know you ghost hunted. No, but I do sometimes, you know, I'll be sitting here late at night. I watch a lot of the people on YouTube now watching mm -hmm. how they, either their techniques or just watching them, their bullshit. Because a lot of us, there's a lot of it out there is pretty, you know, pretty decent. And I'm sitting here going, mm -hmm. Well, they might be paranormal. Yeah. And then there's some, a lot of it. You're like, fight, fight. You know, I'm sitting here squalling at the screen. Fight. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell it's so fake. But yeah. especially uh, the Japanese or the Asian. I mean, seriously, their, their apparitions are solid women with their hair, you know, pulled down over their face. Why you got to have your hair in your face? What you hiding? Makeup. Yeah. Makeup. Yeah. <laughs> and then they start yeah, screaming and hollering and kicking shit. And I'm like, what is wrong with them? You know, it's it's a whole different thing when you're trying to get your videos out there and trying to get people to watch. You know, and admit it. I mean, the crazier the better. I mean, yeah. the more people look. You know, when it, it comes down to serious ghost hunting and all that and serious investigation, it's not that exciting. So people just don't want to watch, but it's that's what the truth is. I mean, we have so many friends that have places that people go ghost hunting. They think that things happen every five minutes. It doesn't, no. you know, I've been in, I have been in situations where it does happen that fast, but 99.99% of the time you're sitting in a dark room in a old building, hoping for one little thing to happen. That's true. And, I don't know if you've noticed uh, watching these uh, YouTubers uh, with uh, where they show these clips of people's investigations or uh, just being nosy and going into an old building or something like mm -hmm. that. Where did all these shadow people come from all of a sudden? Yeah. You know, I mean, all the years that I've, experienced paranormal ever since I was like 10 years old to now I've never seen a solid 
shadow person with a hood and all that shit. Mm -hmm. I've seen, you know, black shadows, they'll move and, you know, mm -hmm. looks like a human, you know, or looks like an animal, but they're see-through and you can barely, you know, sometimes you can see it really good, sometimes not really. Yeah. But now they've got these solid ass shadow people that's down the hallway, peeking out behind the door, standing, you know, like I said, standing in the hallway, standing outside a window. Shit, I'm gonna go down there and see who the hell you are because yeah, I, I feel like it's a person there. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> that could be that could be a homeless person or yeah. you know somebody just and trying to break you. We did a investigation at a hotel or um at a hospital. Uh, and there were homeless people in there, and I'm telling you, it the living is scarier than the dead. Oh yeah, and you don't know what they're going to do. You don't know if they're going to pop out with a knife or a machete or anything. And but yeah, we tried to clear the place, but we found some open doors that were open after we went through. <laughs> so there were people in there. Well, I was seeing a clip where these guys down in, uh, I think it was South America, Brazil or somewhere. They were all packing like 45s. Yeah. Out, drawn out. Right. I'm like, if you go in somewhere and you got to have a gun, you don't need to be there. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to create ghosts or what? That's the thing, though. You know, you're going into these old buildings. You don't know what's in there. I mean, I don't carry a gun, but I have seen where people have gone into these places but the thing is lots of times you're going in these places and they don't have permission to go in those places but like i said we were at a hotel or i keep saying hotel we were at this hospital and there were people in there that broke in and we didn't know where they were so a situation like that but you know we didn't end up seeing anybody but you never know but who knows nowadays well, there's this one young guy I watch. He 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 does that. I guess it's more urban exploring, as he calls yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And he travels all over the country, but he he also goes to a lot of places that you know a lot of paranormal investigators mm -hmm. go to. And he he's got some good stuff, you know. I but I'm I'm scared for him. Yeah. Because you're all he says he's alone. I think he's alone. I mean, you know, he uh, he gets scared. You know, run back, you know, he'll run back to his car and stuff like that. And so I kind of get the feeling that he's on up and up, but he's going to walk in on somebody somewhere mm -hmm. and he's yep. going to get hurt. Yeah. And or I would never go all by myself in some of the places he's went because mm -hmm. just, or even that. he could even fall through the floor or anything. Yeah. I mean, he's even went in, in caves. Yeah. So like, we've been in caves. Yep, we've we've been in caves. <laughs> Get stuck in a cave or a mine shaft or something. Hell, they'll never find you. No, nope. and I'm sure it happens too. Mm -hmm. So you never go alone, right? No, I there was a, go alone. There's a building here in town, like maybe three miles from both of our houses, where some kids went into and they fell down the elevator shaft. They were urban exploring, and you know. Fell down the shaft and died. Oh, Lord. So that's one thing we always say. Don't trespass. You know, yeah. find these places that, you know, sort of like the the um, South Main School down in BG. You know, some place that, it, that, you know, you have to pay, but the pay is actually helping the building. Yeah. Right. You know, and it's safe in there. You're not going to get people that pop out and with knives or machetes or anything, or you're going to, you're not going to fall through the floor. Yeah. Don might pop out at you though. Have you yeah, seen where they walked, walked in where people have got like a pentagram on the floor and it's burning and you got candles burning. No. Have you ever had a paranormal situation where you walked into a place and that shit was going on? Well, here in town, we have the Collingwood Arts Center. And I think that some, I, I know one of the rooms that we go into, somebody painted a bunch of stuff on the walls. And since then, it seems like the activity has changed. I don't know. I think the bone house, when we investigated the bone house, there was a, lar a long history of Santeria going on mm -hmm. there, which I know isn't like so much on the dark side, but it 
you know, there is, you know, animal sacrifice and, and other, it's a ritual type, you know, religion. So, you know, that to me was like one of the scarier places we've been in. Um, just because it was a smaller place, there was a lot of activity in there. There were shadow figures. Um, there were, I don't know, what else did we experience, Joe? Oh, man. Please. Um, Joe got pushed down the steps. So, well, I didn't get pushed down the steps, but I felt something grab my foot. Yeah, it, it was almost like imagine going down the steps and getting your toe caught on a nail, right? Okay, but the steps were only like four inches where your heels were the only thing that was actually on the steps. Mm -hmm. Wow. And there were a lot of things like the, the K2 meter. You can literally hold your K2 meter on the porch and it doesn't do anything. You hold it inside the door. It goes to red. Wow. Just as, as if there was giant power lines underneath the house. Yeah. But there isn't. Um, so, so Don is saying, he says, I wonder if it is the rituals or if it is the people's expectation because they know about rituals. Yeah. I think it's people's expectations, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people give a lot of power to a lot of, uh, you know, these entities or ghost spirits, mm -hmm. however everybody defines it. Uh, I do. I think the power of suggestion, the power of the mind, mm -hmm. the a anticipation, you mm -hmm. know, you're sitting there and you're waiting, it's quiet. And you're like, okay, we just did this ritual. We need a sign. Yeah. And then a can falls over. That's it. Satan has answered. <laughs> you, you know, come on. Was there a breeze? Was you know, a you know? place could be not haunted at all, and you're constantly have these people saying, calling for the spirits to come to the location. Yeah. You're inviting them in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially if there's somebody who doesn't really understand that or know exactly what they're doing or how to protect themselves or or just opening something up and not closing it. I mean, who knows what you're just turning loose on, you know, the location or the area or the people around you too. Yeah. It, 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 and people that uses the Ouija boards, that's, yeah. that's mm -hmm. you know, if, if you don't close it, you know, even if you do open it, you let it out just cause you close. It doesn't mean that what you let out ain't going to go back in. Right. And plus, you know, there again, the, the, the power of suggestion because of the fact that I know or anticipation, I know that when I do this, if it moves a little bit, a yes or a no or a letter or something like that, then it's here. How do you know you're not building up that energy to move that to get an answer that you want? Yeah, because we really don't know what spirit even is. Right. You know, I mean. Yeah, you use the the Ouija board or talking board of that, but that may not even be the whole thing that they're uh, attached to. You could be attached to yourself, or it could be a attached to your consciousness. You don't know, and you're just like waking them up. You could close that session, but like you said, how do you know that they even go back? Well. I I know since I've had my heart attack type of medication that they've had me on, I don't know if I've had some kind of reaction to it or what, but I've been having these vivid dreams. I mean, I actually like wake up and think I'm awake mm -hmm. and then I'm still in the dream. And this mm -hmm. happened like two or three times. And then when I finally wake up, I'm like, am I really awake? You know, <laughs> Jesus shit. I'm tired of dreaming this. I'm done. Time out, you know? Yeah. And I wake up tired and sore. Like, you mm -hmm. know, I've, 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 I've been in fights. I've, I've dreamt that, you know, something's been chasing me. Uh, and I'm sitting here thinking, I'm too fat to be running. Why am I running, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but if you could exercise in your dreams, you wouldn't have to exercise in real life and maybe you'd lose some weight. Yeah, no kidding. I'll try that. Uh, well, I've lost 30 pounds. Really? Yeah. Great. Great. Show me how. <laughs> Show you how. Don't <laughs> eat. That's what I've been yeah. doing. I, I tried all the <laughs> other diets, and I'm like, this ain't working. How about not eating? <laughs> well, I'll be damned. I lost, during the holidays, I lost nine pounds. I'm like, yeah, I did something right. <laughs> <laughs> 
But you know, last year, also this, well, actually February 1st, like the year anniversary, I was coming up out of the basement mm -hmm. uh, where I do pack my paintings and stuff and a little woodworking down there. I got to the top of the uh, step. I know, I remember stepping into the kitchen up from the top of the step. All of a sudden, I felt, why am I falling? And I fell back down the steps backwards. Really? Yeah. And as I was tumbling and falling and rolling there for a split second, I'm like, well, this is it. Because hmm. I knew I was going to either break my neck or, you know, bust my head on the on the concrete. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that split second, I prepared myself and I'll be down. I just rode over and still alive and hurt. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my God. I hurt so bad. Oh, my God. <laughs> Amy's freaking out. My son came trying to help me. I'd already got up by the time he, you know, she's like, hey, God, because I was like, oh, God, don't touch me. Just don't, don't touch me. Did you break anything? No, didn't break it, anything. You're so lucky. I've got a lot of cushion. Lot of cushion. <laughs> I'm telling you. Mm hmm. He's just rolling. I got, I got them rolling. man boobs. Boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're glad you're still here because, you know, we need our cousin here to help us uh, with our our paranormal activity that's going on. Oh, thank you. I, I, I don't know. I've, past few years, boy, I tell you, it's been rough. I quit. I, was, I retired from Black Diamond. I retired from doing uh, Within the Chaos. I also mm -hmm. retired from doing the uh, Christmas photo shoot. And oh, yeah. Fanafest so far because these rednecks down here. Mm -mm, mm -hmm. I ain't doing no Fanafest and people won't want me and won't put no mask on. Uh, you know, I just ain't gonna do it. Yeah. So well, that's your everybody, choice. Everybody kind of freaked out. Look, like, what are you gonna do? I'm like, I'll just paint, do a little woodworking, and work around my yard and my gardens and stuff like that. Do your ghost hunting at home. Do my ghost hunting at home, yeah. Do you, have you ever had activity in your house or anything follow you home? Uh, I, I don't think I've had anything follow me home. I don't, I can't, well, well, I don't think so. Follow me home. But as far as my house, yeah, they, you know, my, the house I live in used to belong to my aunt and uncle, but they both passed away and I bought off my cousin. Mm -hmm. Well, now and then, cabinet door opened up all by itself. And they kept doing that uh, a couple summers ago. And I'm like, quit. Damn it, I'm tired of closing this cabinet door. Quit. <laughs> well, they quit that. Now, I'll be sitting here, you know, either watching videos, working on something. I hear something uh, walking up behind me. You know, you could hear the foot say, kaka, kaka. And I turn around, nothing there. And I'm like, quit it. You're not scaring me. You just aggravate the <laughs> shit out of me. <laughs> oh, snap. That's crazy. How do you yeah. think that Go ghost hunting varies in the South from up here where we are? Do you think there's any difference? Because, I mean, you think about like the Civil War is a lot more prevalent down there. I mean, we had the War of 1812 up here. It was on I think, I think wherever there's the most tragedy or mm -hmm. death, loss of life, I think it, it plays a big role. I, I know we have a lot of death down here in the South compared to up there in your area. But the thing is about your area, you all have more, uh, what is it, more people that are more open to the witchcraft, the... Uh, psychics and stuff mm -hmm. like that down here you know they kind of frown upon people like that i think you i think each each side kind of draws a certain type of energy and and, and uh the, the type of spirits too yeah 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 okay. I, we um it's not really south i mean it's south for us but we're down in uh pennsylvania and we had some activity at one of the cemeteries down there. And I don't know. It's just, it seems like it's a little different. When farther south you go, the hauntings seem different to me. Well, I don't know. It, In what way? Yeah. 
more aggressive or just more activity or from I, historical? I think in the historical way and maybe a little more aggressive. You know, I mean, up here, we, I mean, I don't do residential investigations, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I, I'm a ghost hunter. I'm not a paranormal investigator. I'm a ghost hunter. I go to these pay, you know, pay to play places. Mm -hmm. Or if we go to the cemeteries and then up here, it's more of to where the spirits just want to communicate. And down there, it seems like it's more aggressive. I don't know. It's just, that's just a feel I get. It may be more aggressive because in my opinion is that, you know, the civil war, a lot of death, mm -hmm. the uh, coal mines in our area, a lot of death, a uh, lot of sickness, you know, the pandemic went through and what, 1918, uh, a lot of death. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you've been in the cemeteries down here where you see a whole family wiped out. No, yeah, I haven't haven't been to many down south. And you know, that's heartbreaking. You know, you see a mom, a dad, and six kids. They're like, yeah, I'm, and I'm babies. You know, these are anywhere from babies up to teenagers, and mm. it's heartbreaking. Um, it, it, it's just been a harder life. For a lot of people down in this way for the past 200 years mm -hmm. and, and and ignorance they're yeah. ignorant down here i want to be honest with you <laughs> I, I love i love virginia I yeah love her, virginia she's my she she means everything to me yeah in, in the area i live it's got m more of the dumbest damn people <laughs> I, it's like yeah, living in florida are. without the heat yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. The people, people up north, more intelligent. People live in cities, more intelligent. People that live in rural areas like I live, they're an owl shit. I'm sorry. I'm testifying. They don't like it. Kiss my ass. <laughs> I, I live in the south. They can judge me too. I don't care. But read a fucking book. Quit trying to take them out of the damn school. Talk you know? about, let's talk a little bit about the coal mines and are you feel like there are things underground in these mines that maybe we haven't really explored or we haven't really um, talked about a lot? Are there like they talk about Tommy knockers and I heard about like little people that live in the coal mines in the holler, um, you know. Is there more local legend around coal mines or the mines in the area? Well, what are so many deaths related in coal mining? Mm -hmm. with, you know, with a roof fall, a rock fall. Hell, you just have a rock. I know Dad, when he worked in the mines, there was a man that uh, he worked with. He was just walking along, and a rock was so sharp that when it, just a small rock came down and caught him in the back of the neck and killed him. Hmm. Oh my so, yeah, dad and him talked about my uncles that work in the mines. They talked about seeing, you know, ghosts, you know, seeing a coal miner standing there. Like, who the hell is he? Go up to try to talk to him and just disappear, huh. you know, freak him out. But I think something also with coal, you know, coal, it takes about 300 to 350 million years for it to compress to make coal. The, mm -hmm and all that uh, you know you can see the uh, evidence in the fossils with fish and snakes and trees and all that but I've seen where uh, they have found like a wagon wheel embedded into a coal mine in a roof in Russia mm -hmm. well they took pictures of it and everything and of course I guess they talked you know told their supervisor or owner or my whoever. Well, all of a sudden they shut your mind down. I, I've seen where uh, what, in the 1800s, uh, a boy was busting coal in his house somewhere up north and felt, uh, felt something like a little uh, melting that you would melt like uh, uh, steel in or like softer 
metals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was in bedding coal. Mm -hmm. uh, there's all kinds of things that they're finding that's been, looks like man made bound in coal. Yeah. It's 350 million years old. Now, how's that possible? I mean, it's, it's, yeah, have, you, have you ever heard of the London hammer? Yes. Yeah. They found that down in London, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. And for our listener, it's a hammer that is in rock. It's embedded in rock that they believe to be, uh, what, like 400,000 or more for, or 300, yeah. like 300 million years old. Yeah. It had to, because the handle of, uh, that is left, it's made of wood. It's starting to, uh, uh, break down or not break down, but That's actually right. goes into coal. Yeah. So it had to, they say they'd have to be anywhere from 300 to 350 million years old. Mm -hmm. hell, I mean, seriously, I know we're kind of going off from ghosts. Yeah, but it's still paranormal. <laughs> yeah, to me, it's paranormal. I agree. Yeah. It's something you can't explain. Mm -hmm. You know, and to find that, I mean, I've seen where they had like the cell phone. They found a rock that looked like a cell phone and stuff like that. But this hammer is something that they have. They are just photos of it. They, I mean, the rock is actually molded around the hammer. And you know? it has like these footprints they found embedded in coal mm -hmm. or in coal seam. Human footprints. What? How many times has humans been on this planet to screw it up? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah. I still firmly believe that they, like, before our type of human, there were other humans here that were a lot more advanced than us. I believe that, too. Or mm -hmm. something was here. If it wasn't humans, alien. Well, hell, that's, like, how do we not know that we're not aliens? What if we are a byproduct of some alien race that came here millions of years ago and... And then yeah. you know they got crashed here or landed here. So okay, let's let's see this place and see what they do. Yeah, I mean, there's stories of us that the human race was made as slaves for the aliens. For the Anunnaki. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the Nephilim? Oh, I'm big into that. Oh yeah. I mean, they found here in Toledo. They've actually found giant skeletons. Ohio and West Virginia. I don't mm -hmm. know what it is about y'all's two states, but they they found a lot. You know, Moundsville, mm -hmm. the big mound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But nobody talks about it. Nobody wants you know, you try to talk to people about giants, they're like, What? Oh, there ain't no such thing, John. We do. <laughs> we just had Heather Arnold on. <laughs> She's talking about the giants of Aruba. Yes, the red headed giants. Yeah. yeah. And you know the uh, 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 Native Americans talk about redhead giants yep. here in North America. Mm -hmm. that yeah. they actually fought with. Yeah. Um, the, the famous one was in the cave, at Lovelock Cave. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, and if the listener doesn't know what that is, it, the Native Americans actually fought a giant and pushed him into his cave, set the cave on fire, and it was supposed to be a legend, and then they actually found skeleton or remains in the cave years later. See, every time they find remains, no matter where it is around the world, mm -hmm. they hide it. I don't understand why I hide it. It just doesn't fit in with the dogma that they want people to know. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah. there's so many stories of when the giants are found here in America that the Smithsonian comes and examines them and they never see them again. Well, Daniel, was it Daniel Boone or David Crockett that shot one? Or shot the, a giant to a Sasquatch, kind of? Yeah, that I don't know. I can't, remember, sure. if Dan, I can't remember if it was Daniel Boone or David Crockett, but one of them, supposedly his son, they were out hunting or fishing or something, attacked his son, and he, he had to shoot it two or three times to actually kill it. Really? Yep. And then he buried it. Uh huh. But yeah, I didn't know about that one. Yeah. 
But it, it, it's it's interesting that our our even our recent history about the Giants. You know, even Abraham Lincoln talked about Giants. Yeah. Really? Yep. Oh, I have to look that up. Interesting. Well, that's some old Southern and old hillbilly around here. He knows some shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm surrounded by people that don't give a shit. That's <laughs> <laughs> You gotta read, book, read a book, people. <laughs> I a um a book about the Nephilim, Nephilim, and there was a second book that went with it about the Giants in Ohio, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna buy this book. I'm gonna read it. I bought the second one. I'm gonna read that, and the thing's like three inches thick. They're so they're so big. These books are huge. I'm like, I'm not going to make it through this book. Well, I had a guy uh, that is, he, he's done research of what is the, oh, oh, I forgot the name of the place. Uh, it's like the oldest known um, archaeology. Uh, oh, shit, I can't even say what I'm saying. I can't think what I'm saying. So I'm sorry. But anyway, his name is Jim. I think it's Jim Collins. Okay. And he sent me a book. And I opened that book up. I'm like, oh my God, yay! You know, I, I'm I'm all into this ancient stuff. And I was reading his words in there. I'm like, how the fuck do you pronounce this shit? <laughs> I, I'm like, oh my God. I, I just I got through maybe a quarter of it and I'm like, my head hurts. I, I just I can't do no more because he just has so much technical such in uh, words that uh, you know are from the Latin and mm -hmm. uh, Aramaic and all. And just <laughs> dude, you you got to dumb this down a little bit, you know. <laughs> but I tried, I tried real hard, and I felt bad, so I went and just studied it on my on my own on YouTube mm -hmm. and everything. There and you go. Up and I'm like, wow, this place is 18,000 years old. Damn. It's in Turkey. It's, um, yeah. Yeah. You know the place I'm talking about yeah. that has these animals. I was going to say Puma Punko, but that's not it. No, that's in, that's in South America. It's um, where the the ruins have the H blocks. No, that's California. Is it the one with the H blocks? <laughs> They have a bunch of H blocks, and then they have the the gateway. Oh, okay, God. now that, that's in Peru. I don't know what okay. you're talking about, but this one that's buried. Yeah, they buried it. This one was buried, and mm -hmm. uh, they they think it had something to do with star maps and stuff, but it had mm -hmm. animals actually and carved on it that actually are extinct. Was it Gobi Tepe? Gobekli Tepe. Yeah. Yeah. I had to Google it. That's how I was just I'm doing that too. Yeah, I need an assistant with Google is shit for me, man. God, <laughs> but you know, like we were um I was just thinking about you know, we have dinosaur bones, which we only really discovered what about two hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. Like if we have these giant dinosaurs that live, why wouldn't people be open to giant skeletons? Like mm -hmm. You know, they're not around anymore unless there's a tiny little subset somewhere we haven't discovered yet. Like, what, well, what they're are in the people woods. afraid of? They're afraid they're going to get their head bit off or something? Like, Well, I would. I mean, come on. I know I'm a big old boy. But if I seen somebody, something that's about, I don't know, 20 foot tall, I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> you stay over there. <laughs> stay over there. Yeah, that the one that the Indians put in Lovelock Cave was supposed to be around what 13, 14 feet tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you look at look at a basketball player, mm -hmm. it, 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 let's say seven foot to eight foot tall, and you see these you see these refs out there just right up above their waistline, and, and then imagine another six foot to it or another ten foot to it. It's like holy mm -hmm. shit! <laughs> yeah. You, you, they could actually pick up a grown man and a hire. Rodney, you look snacky. Y'all for sweet. Hey. You're a snack, Rodney. I'd be a snack. Oh, they snack. Just want, yeah. They just bite pieces off. Oh. 
They're gonna get a little nibble. A little nibble. <laughs> a little short ridge nibble. Short ridge nibble. Snack. <laughs> Short or snack, ass is. <laughs> oh, well, maybe that's not politically correct to say that. Oot. <laughs> no, but like, why, why close their minds to the possibility of what can be out there, right? Yeah. I mean, in um, 4.5 billion years that this earth has been here, it could have had 50 life cycles. Yeah. Like, we could just be. I believe there is. Seconds in time, and then it'll all wipe out, and then something brand new will come in. Well, that's just getting back to the parallel. If, if everybody has a soul, and all these people from that long ago had a soul or a spirit, yeah, why, why, why haven't we been able to get any information or any type of hauntings that relate that up? Mm-hmm. And I, I've, I, I know you, you know, you see and hear, especially in Italy, uh, they have hauntings where you know a Roman guard or something like that. Mm-hmm. But if you go back, let's try to go back further. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've hey, asked that question before with some of these people. Like, I think I asked, um, oh, what was his name? I don't know, but don't don't souls recycle? So like. You're only here for so long and then you reincarnation yeah mm-hmm. I, well i don't know like yeah why aren't we getting like ghost activity of cro magnon man or yeah. something yeah. <laughs> or I, I, I talked yeah. to uh, jeff belanger about that and i asked him i said why don't we get cavemen ghosts and he says his answer was we can't relate with them oh. but if we talked to a spirit of somebody that spoke Spanish or French and they're speaking to us in our minds and I, and English they're answering on our equipment. Why couldn't we relate to them? Even no. if you got grunts. Even yeah. If they communicated with grunts. You, know, yeah. uh, 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 uh. you get that on a recorder and be like, was there a monkey in there? Damn investigation. You know, shit. Where'd that come from? Yeah, some kind of response. Well, that's just Joe's stomach growling like it does in every investigation. Yeah, that's true. I tell you. Well, I've, you know, I've, I've kept I, some weird EVPs and it's all my stomach. Uh, yeah, I get that a lot. My stomach <laughs> makes some noises. Uh, example. Uh, I guess that's where I'm getting older. But I was out at the local hardware store and I was looking at some stuff. All of a sudden I heard this I mean, it's not like a demon. <laughs> Man, I'm turning around looking down the hall, aisles and I'm like, what the fuck was that? And I mean, it gave me goose pimples because I'm like, I'm about to, something about to whip something's ass here. And, you know, when I kind of calmed down, and I'm like, okay, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just hearing stuff. Went on down the aisle and started looking at some bolts and screws and pulled them out. All of a sudden, I heard it again. And I'm serious. And the guy, there's a guy over here beside me. He heard it too, and he starts looking around like, "What the hell was that?" <laughs> I said, "Oh no, man!" But I said, "We may, we need a crucifix from the sound of that." <laughs> and he was like, "Damn!" So he walks off, and I kept looking. I got some screws and stuff, and I started up to high, uh, back up the aisle. All of a sudden, I heard it again, but this time I felt it kind of up in my ribs. <laughs> I'm like, it's me. I'm making that damn noise. I'm like, oh, God, what is wrong with my stomach? Oh, shit. <laughs> it scared the hell out. I mean, it literally, that scared me. I had never heard a noise like that before. And I was about ready to run or fight. I knew something was going to happen. It's a demon inside. I got me a demon. I got me a demon, but it's in me. Get it out. Get it out. Put it in the trunk. Take it to Walmart. Yeah. Turn it out. <laughs> okay, you know, so Don, Don like, I'm sorry. Oh, um, comment. Don says energy supposedly doesn't die, but maybe it weakens and fades to the point where we can't pick it up. Yeah, that's um, possible. That's a good possibility. Yeah, because yeah, you know energy just dis- dissipates. Yeah, it doesn't go away, but it just dissipates. So maybe, yeah. I'm, I'm, really, kind of, I'm kind of been leaning into the reincarnation thing for years because uh, when I first started driving a 
tractor trailer across the country. Mm-hmm. First time I went into New Mexico mm-hmm. and Arizona, I'm like, why do I know this place? Why do I feel like this is home? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm out in the desert. This ain't home. I'm you. I'm my mountains are my home. But I felt so strongly every time I'd go through there that I'd been there, that that was my home. So is that part of reincarnation? I don't know, but maybe I was a cowboy one day. I probably didn't live maybe. long, but maybe you're the horse. Maybe I was a horse. <laughs> you know, just you my luck, I was a damn goat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or she, oh, you can see the ghost to yourself. <laughs> oh, snap. Damn. Um, I don't know. Have you ever had like your past lives read by any of the psychics or mediums? Uh uh-uh. uh. Well, we got to have that done for you then. Maybe we can find out some information. Uh oh. <laughs> find out <laughs> I was Alexander the Great. Now I'm just kicked back and relaxing. Too you loud. could have been like May West in your past life or something. <laughs> I, if I was, I was a whore. <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm telling you, if I was a woman, I keep legs up all the time. Come on, boys, come on. Oh, oh, you gotta fuck that spirit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> he was he was religious too because he keeps screaming, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> But that's the Pentecostal days when I went to church back when I was a kid. So when you were um you know traveling across the road, did you ever see anything you couldn't explain? Yes, yes. Like I seen, uh, well, one time going through New Mexico, uh it's probably about because I love I love driving at night. I didn't like driving so much in the day, especially yeah. in the city. I hated it. Yeah. But, you know, going across country, I, I drive at night and uh, because I, I always wonder, I'm like, I'm going to see something. I just feel it. Mm-hmm. It took a couple of years. We're going through New Mexico, uh, probably about 50 miles outside of uh, Albuquerque. There was a, a lady standing on the side of the road in a white dress. And I'm like, there she is. <laughs> there she is. So I stopped. I mean, it's two o'clock in the morning. You know, it, it's in the summertime. It's hot. So I pulled over real quick, went back there, nothing, hmm. nobody. And you, if you run, you're, I'm going to see you run because you're out in the field or you're trying to climb up the side of the damn rock cliff. So yeah, yeah I wouldn't know where she could disappear to except. That's just interesting. Disappear. Did you yeah. ever like dig into the legend and see if there was any local lore about that area with ladies? Yeah. And yeah. When I went to the truck stop, I asked them if had any, you know, people had, passed away and they're, they're like they have accidents in that area all the time uh, so it's a place that you know i guess people speeding because out there it's speeding 75 mm-hmm. and of course people get stupid and do like 150 150 150 150 but yeah. also one night uh well uh i've seen uh uh, it's coming. And this both happened in Arizona. Uh, it's coming through Arizona, and it's late at night. And another trucker was with me. He was behind me, and we were talking, you know, just keeping each other awake, talking about family and all that. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, the sky just got bright green. I'm like, what the hell? All of a sudden, this green like fireball just shot across the front of us. I'm sure it's meteor. Mm-hmm. But the funny thing is that meteor went straight. And then cut a hard right, mm. and they went over the damn hill. And I'm like, "Oh my gosh! Yeah. Like, meteors don't do that. They don't turn. <laughs> oh they don't turn." And the guy behind me was like, "What the Sam hell was that?" <laughs> I said, "It's going that way. Don't worry about it. It's going yeah. away from us. Don't worry. We just keep going." But another time near Phoenix, uh. It was late at night, and I was actually, I used to love to listen to um, Coast to Coast. Yeah. And um, somebody had called in to Art Bell and said that there was a sighting of a UFO near Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, I'm near Phoenix. I don't see no UFO. All of a sudden, here comes this bright light over the hill. Just a shit hit getting it. 
and two damn jet fighters right behind it. They had the blue flame oh, shot out their ass trying to keep up with it. I got the goosebumps. Like, yeah, get him, boys, get him. <laughs> <laughs> but they just I, went so far outside, I couldn't see them no more. So, but it, that was fun. I just wonder what is the attraction about the Arizona, New Mexico area that it's so much UFO activity? You think there's maybe something underground? that is attracting them there like a certain type of rock or maybe something crashed a million years ago or buried un in there well you know you got the roswell incident where they said a ufo crashed and then they yeah. backed out of that story uh you got area 51 you know it's hard to tell maybe there's maybe we're doing research mm -hmm. it might be attracting them or we may have captured you know, we may have alien life here and we've got it hid underground somewhere and they just like, hey, we need Bobby back. <laughs> Plus, yeah, the military bases, the the um, yes, nuclear sir. testing went on out there. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure there's a lot that draws them in that area because of the military and the testing, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, UFO activity ramped up when we started our nuclear testing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was incidences where the, the, uh, they had UFO sightings over the silos and they actually started the countdown, fired up the rockets oh and goodness. the military were freaking out because they couldn't stop it. And then just before the rockets took off, they shut back off. And I think it was the aliens tell them, look at, look what we can do. Oh my well, if, you, if you look at, you know, paintings, uh hundreds of years ago you know michelangelo and so forth and even if you look at rock paintings cave paintings of alien looking creatures ufos i'm like why is people yeah. trying to act like this is not a real thing yeah mm -hmm. native americans had the ant people mm -hmm. yeah. they basically had triangular bodies with heads with antlers coming out and why would they lie this mm -hmm. is the thing, you know, people like, especially Native Americans, they were big about not lying. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would believe a Native American before I believe a European. But when you look at the cave art and rock art that they find in like China and Europe and so forth, Malaysia, you know, it dates back to, you know, 20,000, 50,000 years ago. So mm -hmm. if you're lying back then, <laughs> let's do some propaganda. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's let people in the future, you know, try to figure this shit out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we talked about the ruins of, um, yeah, that city. Mm -hmm. That one city. People were so advanced back then that they were carving. Uh, figures into the rock and it wasn't where they carved them and then they stuck them on the rock they actually carved these giant boulders into square you know pillars with the animals sticking out of the pillars and they're supposed to be what do you say a hundred thousand years old mm -hmm. well according to our scholars a hundred thousand years ago we didn't have tools you know to, that could do that so that's why I believe there were civilizations that we didn't know about so long ago. And the only thing that can be left is stone carvings and stuff like that. I mean, even if they had metal, even if they had steel, all that, that'd be gone by now. Mm -hmm. They built it to last, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the great pyramid, that yeah. one of the biggest mysteries of our fucking planet. Mm -hmm. It's built right in the center, on the center of our planet. Yeah. You know, the geometry, the measurements, and everything that went into building that, we can't do today mm -hmm. with the technology we have. No. And and it was only off something like, what, a quarter of an inch? For 100 or 200 yards? Yeah. That's and you're going to tell me that a bunch of little skinny slaves, men, they call them, they thought slaves built it. It's like, no, it's too much work. 
there's there's laying what 20 blocks a day if they could be uh, saying what was it 20 blocks a day to do it for 20 years mm -hmm. and that's 24 hours yeah 24 hours 20 blocks a day for 20 years yeah and i've never been there but you look at these pictures like of graham hancock and that that are standing on these blocks they're the size of three-story buildings yeah I, I, it, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Do they really think a lot of people are dumb? I mean, I grant, yeah, they are, but <laughs> some of us aren't that damn dumb. That's incredible. And seeing that, and that's where I get into. I know a lot of people kind of look at me crazy when it comes to the paranormal world. I think a lot of the stuff that we're seeing and hearing are coming through wormholes, or where we're so close to another parallel universe that some of their world leaks into our world mm -hmm. and probably some of ours leaks into yeah. there. And, you know, that's like every thought, you know, a, a scientist I read that uh, every thought that you decide to do, like if you decide to go right instead of left, by you deciding to go right creates another parallel universe to go left. Yeah. Or straight ahead. Mm -hmm. so the multiverse. Yeah, the multiverse. Mm -hmm. They just, you know, you've got eight billion people on our planet right now, or close to it, making all these different, just constantly, constantly more universes being added. The multiverse. <laughs> and that's what they feel deja vu is. They like, that's what they feel the Mandela effect is. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think about the Mandela effect? Because I've, I've, question a lot of it myself it's very odd because i mean it's i mean how can everybody have memories of something that's not true or not i shouldn't say true that's different mm -hmm. and we all can't have shared memories like that uh great example i was with mom and i said ma what's the lord's prayer and she, you know we both know it and i said uh look it up and she opened her bible and it didn't say for those who trespass against us it says now for the debtors against us or something like that uh -huh. there's through, i think 370 examples in the bible alone that are different than what people realize yeah, I've seen where some guy okay. had like a 200 euro Bible mm -hmm. and he compared it to today's Bible. And like you said, there's like 300 different passages or verses that are completely different. Yeah. And like the Lord's Prayer, everybody says, you know, one way, open up the Bible and look. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't think that it was changed because I heard that. And I'm like, oh, come on. And so I asked mom and she opened up her Bible and it said something about um, forgive those, forgive our debtors or something like that. It doesn't say forgive those who trespass against us. It said some, something completely different. Yeah. But you have, you have the Vatican and the Pope's changing the, the, you know, vernacular all the time. I mean, just in the last 20 years, they've changed the responses in the Catholic mass. It used to be mm -hmm. like, and also with you. And now you say, and with your spirit. Which is interesting. Oh, I know. It's so weird. We go to church with mom and they're saying the wrong things. <laughs> <laughs> but but can you imagine what's in the Vatican vaults? Like what oh, yeah. secrets they have changed and and um, suppressed. And, you know, I'm sure there's evidence of these giants, of aliens, of other worlds, of portals and dimensions and demons hidden in those vaults somewhere. Oh, I agree. I agree hundred percent because what's the best way to control people? Hide information, mm -hmm. yeah. hide the truth. And, and you know, you can't make no money if everybody knows the truth. Yeah, that's true. I that's mean, it, this is, it's, we are slaves. We are a slave society. We are slaves. Mental. Yeah. Yeah. We're slave to our jobs. We're a slave, you know, to, uh, special our credit card companies. Our cre oh, God. 
you know, it's, it's, it's the credit card companies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck y'all. She won't say, but I will. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> well, listen, Rondi, we are out of time. I, no, we just I love the fact that you came on with us. Um, let's say goodbye. And if you want, we could stay on for the live for a little bit. That'd be fine. I'm fine but, with um, that. And thank y'all for inviting me and, you know, and having me on because I, I've just been laying around, you know, painting and doing a little bit of work. You know, it's like my book, I put the book out and I had people gave me shit about it. And I'm like, well, fuck y'all too, you know, I worked hard and, you know, all them investigations put that together. Mm -hmm. You don't like it. You don't have to be so mean about it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but, yeah. That's but, the thing uh, about this, this uh, paranormal world. There's a lot of mm -hmm. ego involved. Yeah. yeah. Too much ego. Yeah. Too much. But uh, let's end the recording here, uh, but we will stay on the live. So yeah. let me say thank you, Rodney, for having, having this, uh, Join in with you. I almost said have us on your show because I'm so used to you having your show. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so, a great show. Everybody go back and look at the YouTube videos within the chaos. Yes. And uh, I miss live from Walmart parking lot. I really do. You know, I've had a lot of people tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, I've had, especially if they see me at Walmart. Yeah. They'll peck on the window. Are you doing Walmart live? <laughs> uh, I kind of quit doing that. Why, wow, man? Okay, thanks, Rodney. And for everybody, everybody listening, please, 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 like we always say, go up to our website. We have t shirts for sale. That's uh, buy some t shirts from us so we have some gas money to make it to the conventions this year. <laughs> for and, sure. But let's leave with a little bit of sliver from Dead and Five. But hang on, we're going to stay live. Yeah. There is something I have to tell you Can't explain the way I feel inside Twisting for my brain among other things I can't feel the slipper in my side Cause I'm lost without you Lost to love you Lost to love you Here we go But I cannot help you Save my life Cause it's not the end As we live through the struggle I believe that we will pretend As we live through the struggle Break down Break down Recorder is off. All right. Got a mask up. <laughs> <laughs> But I totally agree with you about how everything is getting hidden because like with the giants, they found skeletons here in Toledo, some right downtown, some out by mommy river. And they had like the ones downtown had the double row of teeth. The ones that they found down on the mommy river had six fingers, six toes. You know, so uh, there's other races out there. And I, who knows, maybe I, they're Bigfoot now. My opinion, I think it all ties in. Mm -hmm. I, I think mm -hmm. so much with the Giants, the, the, the Bigfoot, the uh, the UFOs, the, the paranormal, uh, especially with spirits and or, you know, or aberrations. And I just think somehow... Mm -hmm that it all ties in somehow. And I, I know it's kind of a reach when you've got people that, you know, uh, that investigate just different areas. But, you know, I, I, in my heart, I, I just, in my soul, I, I just feel like it all ties in. And we'll find out when we die. Hopefully we find out when we die. Yeah. I mean, because I can't wait to die. I was, I'll be honest with no, no, you. No. We don't want you to die too soon. When, when, I, when I had that heart attack, you know, I told them when they was putting a stint in, I'm like, hey, if, what, if anything happens, I'm at peace and I'm ready to rock and roll this. Yeah. <laughs> the doctor is like, are you all right? <laughs> I 
but you're like, no, honey, you're like honey i um hunt goes for a living so you know <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm ready to find out what happens on the other side let's do this but no i didn't i was like damn it <laughs> we want to we want to hunt or uh we want to haunt other people yeah oh i can't <laughs> wait to do that there's a bunch you of people know. i'm gonna give them those i'm gonna give them the heebie-jeebies yeah <laughs> I got a few. Did you know that I had a stroke? Yeah. Did you know that, Rodney? You have a stroke? I had a stroke. Oh, are you doing all right? Yeah. You can see the star right there. Oh, they had to go in? Cut them oh, open. Yeah. Cut me open. Ripped me open. Oh, God. They had to do mom like that. Yeah. A few months ago. She didn't have a stroke. She was about to. Okay. Oh. Yeah. that's. They said this was all blocked. Yeah. Hers was like 90 eight percent block mm -hmm. or something oh and then God. when they when the doctor brought it out they took a picture of it uh -huh. big old i'm like how the hell is that blood clot in your artery that big yes. i was oh sorry that uh, big <laughs> <laughs> i gotta get a new camera web camera my camera ain't work crap i gotta it's fine. Oh, there's activity behind you there's that ghosts behind is. you she, uh, Amy, she's, she, she's not here. She's not here. This is. Oh. <laughs> we're, anyway, we're live. Oh. Get, in, get in the screen. Oh, she's getting <laughs> groceries. <laughs> she went grocery shopping. She said, I'll be out as long as it takes. And I'm like, yeah, you'll be back before I get done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we so, don't get a chance. How big, how big a blood clot did they take from you? I don't know. Oh, I know it was. Uh, I I know it was the whole length, but they never did see how big it was. Mom was huge, and they said it was twisted. Oh my how, God. how does it get twisted? I mean, I know I live a very stressful life, but all that maybe that type of rock and roll music you listen to. Twisted. The headbang, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, bang bang, yeah. I put on my black wig so the hair goes like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My hair, my hair is a thin and out. <laughs> I told him, I said, one day I'm going to be bald. Damn it. Look at your wig. Look at your rug. Hey, I'd wear it. I'd give me one of them big old pink ones. Yeah. Big old curly ones. Yeah, for sure. Why not? Oh, Everybody God. else does it. Why shouldn't you? That's exactly. Paint my fingernails. Yeah. Get me some uh, platform boots or shoes or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Come out, come out looking like a gay Gene, uh, Gene Simmons. <laughs> Dress up it as could a be your stick. It could be your thing. Why yeah. not? You could be a TikTok sensation. Get yourself a Bigfoot outfit. Yeah. Do you know what? When I when I'm talking to people, talk, you know, I can I can joke and carry on. Mm -hmm. But you know, sitting there in front of a camera and trying to do it, I have a hell of a time. I can't. I have a hard time. Why? Because I, I feed off your reaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're not smiling or you know, like, oh, mm -hmm. go. I know I can go on. But yeah. If right. you sit there and you kind of do this, eh, that wasn't too good there, guy. I'll jump to something else. Mm -hmm. But looking at a, just a, 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 a <laughs> camera, I, I can't do it. Yeah. That's why we love doing live shows. Yeah. That's why, I mean, not video live. I'm talking in the like when we did Phantom Fest, we actually sat down with people and in interviewed them face to face. We love doing that because, yeah, it's you, you're there's more to language than just talking, right? And, and if you see the reactions of people, you know how to uh, uh, proceed. Mm -hmm. I, these kids, they're able to grab a cell phone and just say and do some of the stupidest shit. You can. <laughs> I don't see how they do it. They're not getting no reaction. I'm playing there. I guess maybe where they're getting a reaction is when they get uh, three million likes. Yeah, they do. Have you seen the new uh, Facebook little shorts that are getting for thirty million views? And I'm like, why? I need to start doing this. I do. I know, right? Like uh, seriously. Do it for I the know, TikTok money. I, I know. I started a YouTube channel just to talk about my life. Mm -hmm. you know? Because my daughter told me, I, I told her, because I, I said, I'm kind of bored. She's like, 
start your YouTube channel, talk about yourself. She's like, Daddy, you got all kinds of stories. Well, I've been, I started it. I've only got like eight likes and I've had it up for like <laughs> since last summer. Yeah. Eight subscribers. And I'm like, wow, I'm killing that, ain't I? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but those eight people, those eight people are uh, enjoying it. You're making some money. I, I thank those eight people. See, I, and I, I even told them, you know, during the video that I'm not. If you subscribe, great. <laughs> I feel like I'm on the price is right now. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I had eighty. I had eighty-five cents, and I thought I'd go spin again. <laughs> Dollar <laughs> twenty five. Yep, boy, I screwed up. <laughs> That's for sure. But yeah, I enjoy. I I do. I, I mm -hmm. enjoy talking about my life and and and, and uh, experiences I've had because it, uh, it is kind of unique and meeting people like you know and even family that's either got the same interests, same yeah. experiences. It's awesome. You know, and that's why we do the paranormal. That's why we go into these old buildings. It keeps that alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our stories, our our adventures. You know, um, I know Danger Don is on watching. You know the video, and he, him and Kelly run the South Main School, mm -hmm. and they have ghost hunts out of that. And they're doing the same thing. They're they're keeping the spirits alive. Mm -hmm. They're keeping the memory alive. They're keeping you know, it's it's given the spirits a place to go to where people are going to talk to them. If you, know. you get the right people to talk to them. I yeah. mean, there's some people that you're like, Oh no, please don't go in. <laughs> please don't go in. Slides, <laughs> slides a REM pod in the room and starts screaming at it. Light off the lights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had that happen. We were at, at a, we were at the Collingwood arts center and I finally made, communication with the spirit and we were getting you know you don't just go in and ha expect them to talk i mean we got communication with them uh -huh. and we were getting responses so this kid come in and he slides his rem pod you know on the floor into the space we're talking and he literally was screaming light up the lights light up those lights i'm like me and the guy that were doing the ghost hunt looked at him and we're like what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you know? they, it, it, it's just the in, instant uh, gratification that it, these younger people got to have. Mm -hmm. They yeah. don't have the patience to sit there, calm things down, especially if you got equipment you set up and stuff. Just calm things down and talk to them like you. That's one thing that a lot of people, a, a lot of people that has been in the group, my group throughout the years, Everybody always wanted to go with me and, and yeah. do an investigation. I told them, I said, well, when we go in, I said, I'm boring because I go in and I talk to them like I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm trying to get to know you. You know, mm -hmm. are you a man? Are you a woman? Uh, what, do you, you know, what's your birthday? You know, tell me one of your, you know, tell me a memory you have, a happy time or a sad time. And, you know, I'm, I'm Rodney. And, you know, pleased mm -hmm. to meet you. Yeah, but yeah. no, this young one's like, "Is there anybody here?" Yeah. <laughs> and the spirit is standing right in front of him, going, "Yes, we are. We're right okay. here." But we're not talking to you because you're being rude, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I th I think we've always got more activity when we were just kind of talking amongst ourselves instead mm -hmm. of like you know just having casual conversations about whatever. And they're trying to jump in on that conversation like if you go back and listen to uvps when you're just sitting there like can you talk to us and then silence versus like all of us you know in the group just chattering I, I, I would say 80 percent of our evps are like that mm -hmm. yeah. when two investigators are together and they're sitting you know after they went through the routine of Hey, is anybody here? You know, your birthday and all that shit. And then then they would be, hey, so how, how was your weekend? And then mm -hmm. they, oh, and I went fishing and all, and all of a sudden you hear, hi. Yeah. How like are you fishing. doing? Or, yeah. You know. Yeah. I don't know. I, um, I always think of it 
or try to approach it as, you know, these people had lives, they had thoughts. I always try to um, relate music from that time period that we think that they're from because it's universal. Everybody loves music, you know, and like music takes you back in your memories and your emotions. And then I was like, kind of like to ask them about like, what foods did they like to eat? What, what do you miss? You know, like what food do you miss most eating? Is that a, even a thing over on the other side? Do you even care about that kind of stuff? Well, have you seen that new show on CBS called ghost? I haven't seen it yet. I really want to watch it, but I haven't seen it. Get a chance. Watch it. I love it. Okay. Here you've got these different spirits from different time periods. Mm -hmm. And they can't eat, but they can smell the food. Oh. Uh. <laughs> and you, 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 they'll, they'll be telling the people that, you know, they live and be like, uh, could we have, uh, you know, like pizza again tonight? And they're like, we love the smell of pizza. Yes. <laughs> and each one of them, you know, they, they can't find their ghostly powers yet. This one guy. Mm -hmm. He's a, he, he finally was able to draw enough power to where he could, like, push a button. And they're all like, yay! <laughs> I'm gonna it, it's a out. really good comedy, and, and, yeah. and it, it has a lot to do. I, I told Amy, I said, I just wonder if the spirits that, when we go into these places, are sitting back and making fun of us, like, you know. Oh, I'm sure. Look at this one, <laughs> Here they go again, asking us to talk into that box. Yeah, here they, well, yeah. that's all they want us to do. Yes, my name is Jim. Yes, Make I was born in 1842. <laughs> <laughs> They're asking crazy. us to knock on the wall. Why would we want to knock on the wall? We're talking right to them. Yeah. Why can't you hear me? What is wrong with you? Oh, yeah, we're dead. Yeah, we're <laughs> dead. You don't supposed to hear us, but okay. With your equipment. You, they always say, do you know you're dead? Uh, I think they know that they're dead. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a great show. It really is. It's got a Viking. Mm. It's got a Native American. It, it got a, a, a guy that was killed in the 80s. He was a, like a Boy Scouts troop, and he got shot in the fucking neck with an arrow. So <laughs> he's constantly walking around with an arrow in his neck. <laughs> I mean, it's a really. I, I just wonder if they really do just look at us and go, "What the hell is wrong with these people?" Probably, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, and do you have you ever heard of? Okay, on um, the ghost hunters, the ones that are the taps. Okay, they did a investigation at the Shanley Hotel, and they were in the princess room. And they captured EVP. And ever since I've listened to this EB, EVP, it has changed my beliefs on spirits and that. Now, who knows if it was real or not. But how the EVP goes is they're in the princess room and they're going, Princess, are you here? Hello, Princess, are you here? And you hear the EVP going, Of course I'm here. Where are you? And then uh, they're like, Princess, are you here? And she's like, Hello. And even before they even started, you could hear her say, Hello. And they keep asking, and she keeps saying, Yes, I'm here. Because they're not listening back to the EVP right away. Right. And the EVP actually says, This is not funny. I'm calling security. Okay. So, which makes me think, Do the spirits. Or are the spirits that we're seeing, living people, seeing ghosts, which are us? Right. You know, because I've heard so many stories since I've since I've listened to that EVP. It made me think about that, so I looked into it. I've heard so many stories of people that see ghosts, and then 100 years later, it's the same scenario, but backwards. You know, there's one case where there was a woman that always told her family that she saw ghosts walking into her room. It was three men. All right. There were three ghosts that they, that this woman kept seeing in her house a hundred years ago. And now these three guys are going into the house 
trying to get her spirit to talk to them wow. is is the ghosts that she always talked about those men you know well that's a, that's a good point now we're talking about maybe some kind of uh time displacement mm -hmm. you know or was she seeing into the future and thinking it was a ghost that's what i mean yeah are we are we when we see ghosts are we looking into the past and thinking it's a ghost when it's a live human at that m moment in time yeah but we're able to see back and forth for future and past mm -hmm. i think that's a good i think that's another good uh uh, uh theory i yeah. really do i i just don't think that what we're what people are considering ghosts i i my i just don't think it's what we think it is yeah you know and you go into like waverly hills and places like that where are supposedly extremely haunted and you hear of these stories of when the people that were there in the asylum used to see ghosts all the time and they kept saying no they're just crazy people you know maybe they weren't crazy in the fact that they uh were mentally ill i mean i'm sure they were there for a reason but they keep seeing all these ghosts well how do we know those ghosts aren't the people that are going through waverly hills right now exactly mm -hmm. exactly and see i had an experience when i was uh, a teenager uh <laughs> Uh, 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 <laughs> but uh i went way way back up in the mountains and um i smelt smoke you mm -hmm. know like somebody had a little fire going on and i seen it and i walked way up and it'd been farther up in the mountains than i'd been and uh walked around uh this little path and i seen a little shack uh, you know, setting up on uh, back then how they put their foundation up on rocks and uh, had a little porch and had like a hound dog and this old man sitting there in a rocking chair. I'm like, how, who the fuck was this far back up in the mountains? This old, you know, the old guy. Mm -hmm. He came me, hey, bud, how you doing? Come on over. Went over. I told him who I was, introduced myself. He, oh, yeah, I know your daddy, your grandpa. I mean, he started naming off people, and I, you know, I sat there on his porch and you know, petted his old dog, and uh, you know, he talked about you know just my family. Yeah, that's all he talked. You know, didn't talk about much about him. Mm -hmm. he talked about my family. Well, I told him I had to get back. It was getting late, and I was probably was there for a good two hours. You know, he offered me, you know, drink of water out of the old uh, 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 metal cup thing and i was like oh and, you know and i drank water uh -huh. I, no i was experienced this was not a dream mm -hmm. and i went home next day i told dad when he got off work i'm like dad who is that old man that lives way back up on top of the mountain and he said well, well what are you talking about ain't nobody lives up there i said there's an old man Lives way back up on the mountain. I said, how the hell does he get shit in and out of there? And then he started thinking about it. He said, well, there was, when I was a kid, there's an old man that would live way back up on the mountain. Mm -hmm. They called him, his, I can't remember what his name was, but dad, dad told me his name. He said he'd come out once a month with an old hound dog, go down to the store, buy what he needed for the month, and then go back up on the mountain. And I said, well, when you was a kid, he's like, yeah, when I was a kid, he was an old man then. I said, Jesus Christ, how old is this man? I said, but those are shit far. I went up and I seen him. He's like, well, he said, hey, Rod, he died when I was a kid, you know, a couple mm -hmm. of years. You know, I was probably about eight, nine years old. So we were talking a good 20 years. Yeah. 20, 30 years, something like that. Well, he told me he wanted to go see where I was talking. Cause he'd never been to this place uh, so we went up one weekend and went around the corner there you see the the footers the rock yeah footers. but the, the house was not even there wow yeah it's just trees and grown up 
And I told that dad's like, you lying to me talking about that. I said, no, I swear to God, dad, I'm not lying. I sat on the damn porch. I actually drank some water from it. I sat there and thought he was in a rocking chair. Wear bibs, didn't he? He said, yeah. Mm-hmm. Had old hat. Oh, one of them farmer hats. Yep. I said, how the fuck am I supposed to know that? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he was like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's time to get away. It was like a time slip or something. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, that's a time slip. Yeah, that's exactly. A time it was a time slip. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Then I went back in time for a brief moment and yeah. you know, said, talk to this old guy. Now, yeah. was there a reason to that? You know, are these time slips happening purposely to certain people? Or is just accidentally happening? I don't think there's any accidents. I think maybe he knew that, you know, that since you were there, you would, maybe your family knew him. So he was familiar with you. And, you know, who knows? If there was a message in there for some reason, or maybe he just wanted to be remembered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he knew your family and, you never know. Never it's amazing. Know. I've read and seen stories where people have went through stuff like this. Yeah. You yeah. know, what we what I would consider a time slip. Mm-hmm. And, and, and like you were talking about the lady seeing the three men. Yeah. You know, maybe she was, you know, able to see just a, a small fraction of the future. Oh, our universe is massive. Yeah. We have no idea really what's going on out there. No. Mm-mm. You know, it could be, uh, I mentioned this before, is like the grays and stuff like that. How do we know that they're not us from the future coming back to see the past? Like, you know, how ancient aliens, we talk about ancient aliens. Mm-hmm. How do we know that it's not time travel tourism? Where they're coming back, and instead of reading about it, something that happened, they're there to watch it. Yeah. Can you believe we evolved from those people? <laughs> you know, they're just laughing at us like, yeah. oh, God. Yeah. For so many credits, you get to drive by and see our ancient monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're going to the funnest place of all, Walmart parking lot. <laughs> Walmart parking lot. <laughs> See, I, I, after there are aliens at Walmart. <laughs> well, you know, people started getting really mean, really mm-hmm. mean, especially when I post my yes. opinion on Facebook. That's the reason why I don't really do that no more. Yeah, because th- that I had to block people that I grew up with. Mm-hmm. I had to block family, and I'm like, maybe I am pushing it too far. Maybe it's me. And now I have, you know, you all and other people when I they do see me out, do the Walmart parking lot. Why ain't you back on Facebook talking shit to everybody? Loved it, man. Loved it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I get a lot of hate, man. I people, got people threatening to kill me and shit. <laughs> people are just too sensitive. Yeah, we are. People just, it's, I don't know. They're just too sensitive. They're They're easily offended. Well, it's, it's like uh, there's a guy here in Tazewell. He's, you know, big businessman. He's worth millions of dollars. Got a big ass mansion on the hill looking at his peasants. And me and him go back and forth. And, you know, he, he called me a racist. Mm-hmm. And I had enough. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, how do you call me a racist? I, you know, I, I would I would do anything for anybody. Mm-hmm. I don't care uh, the color of your skin. I don't give a shit about your religion. And when I drove a truck, I went days and weeks without eating because I I would give my money to people that, you know, would come up to me. Hey, man, you got you got five, you know, look like shit, you know, homeless and stuff to make sure. Like daddy told me, if somebody comes up to you and asks for help and you got it to help them, help them. Mm-hmm. No matter what, he said, if they take it and go drink it, that's on them, not you. You did the right thing. Mm. 
And, you know, I always did that. I always, and still yet today, I'll do it. But to have him call me a motherfucking racist mm-hmm. when I have when I have done everything in my poor ass little miserable life can do to help somebody, God, I wanted to go to that mansion and kick the damn door down mm-hmm. and beat his ass. Yeah, but I had to block him. Mm-hmm. I just had to block him because you, you ain't calling me a racist. Yeah, <laughs> and it's easy for people to hide behind the the Facebook. Uh, mm-hmm. Facebook. The yep. Facebook. The Facebook. I hate Facebook. I used to love it, but I hate yeah. it now. I'm because still addicted. I admit it. I'm still addicted to it. But it like at work, I have not I I can't read because I work on the machines so fast. Mm-hmm. So I guess it's just easy for me to just look at Facebook and scroll endlessly of the useless scrolling, you know. But. I used to enjoy it, and you know, I post my artwork up, you mm-hmm. know, maybe a picture of the kids or me or grandkids or whatever. But just oh gosh, as soon as I pop up, there's people sending me messages, and I'm like, oh my god, yeah. I got a cousin. I got one of our cousins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell this story. I don't give a shit what people hear about it or not. <laughs> but uh, my uncle, uh, when my grandma Shorty's passed away, mm-hmm. now we used to live behind her. So I was there every day helping her, you know, get wood or coal in, help her with the grocery, whatever. Whatever mama wanted, by God, we got it done for her. Well, my uncle, when she passed away, inherited the house. Mm-hmm. Well, he was wanting to sell the whole mountain and her house and two other houses is on the property. Well, I didn't have $150,000 at the time. Still don't. But he he decided, and I didn't know, to break it up in three parts to sell each part, at, you know, like $50,000. Well, if I knew that, I would have jumped on my mom's house. Yeah. Because that house is where basically where I grew up at. You know, mm-hmm. well, she bought it, her and her husband, and they've had it. And I told her when I found out she bought it, I said, if you ever decide to sell it, let me know. I want to buy it or try to. And, uh, okay, well, she, she, she's aggravating. You know, every time I pop up on Facebook or something or messenger, bam, hey, can I talk to you? Can I call you? No, I don't want I'm I'm on you know I'm on a potty or I'm in the shower I'm I'm driving down the road Jesus Christ <laughs> and uh, well I went down there to look at it and make sure that it still looked good and good shape and it is they took care of it but you know they want sixty grand for it and I know they paid forty eight for it yeah and the only thing they've done is paint it mm-hmm. I'm like. You ain't done no twelve thousand dollars worth of paint here. <laughs> and her husband's like, Yeah, sixty thousand or nothing. I said, Well, bye. Yeah. And it broke my heart mm-hmm. because you know, I'm like, I I really want this place so bad to keep it in the family. Mm-hmm. But her husband is a dick. <laughs> I mean, he he's old fashioned, man. She didn't even speak to me when we went down there, she never said a word to me. She talked to Amy and the girls and he talked to me and started lying about how he had to rewire the place. I know that's a damn lie because me and my daddy and my uncle rewired it when the place caught fire. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So that was a fucking lie. I mean, he kept telling me lies about shit that he done that I can look at it and tell that me, daddy, and my uncle did it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you lying, son of a bitch. But yet she, you know, she still wants to message me every fucking day. Hey, can I talk to you? No, I don't want to talk to you right now. You know, I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't, they, I didn't maybe still had to try to sell it. Huh? Well, she said that she, if she didn't sell it to me, she wasn't going to sell it. Hmm. I said, I ain't paying 60. Yeah. So I'll, give you, I'll give you 50. Mm-hmm. It needs a new roof. I mean, the roof's still good, but it, it does need a new roof. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a few things there that needs a little work, but 
I ain't giving you twelve that more thousand dollars when you ain't done maybe three hundred dollars worth of paint. I'll give you three hundred dollars. There you go. <laughs> I was gonna say start telling her it's haunted. Say, listen, yeah. I'm a professional. I know it's haunted. Haunted. Well, I know it's haunted because I see my papa there. After yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I was I was about ten years old, and I was sitting in the living room, and my uncle was in the kitchen, and I was in there watching TV. And uh, my uncle was in there in the kitchen doing a line of coke, and uh, I didn't know it was coke at the time. You know, I just seen you. Know, I'm like, what is that? Is that some kind of new medicine? What the hell is that? It is medicine for him. Yeah. <laughs> I sat there watching TV, and all of a sudden, where I was sitting in the corner, where they had a rocker, uh, to the left was my grandparents' bedroom. You know, watching TV, and all of a sudden. I look up, there's my grandpa just walked by and he looked down and he smiled. And I'm like, Papa. And then and I was like, Did I just see Papa? And then all of a sudden I heard my uncle go in there and go, Daddy. I'm like, Yep, time to go. <laughs> so I went off to the right to the basement door and out and back up to the house. I'm hmm. like, mm -hmm. Yep, no. That, they got a problem they need to work out. I don't yeah. know what for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's when cool. I first had my first experience with paranormal. Yeah. I can't remember what mine is, really. I think the very first thing was hearing my name called and I was home alone. Yeah. At your house? No, at, at mom and dad's house. At mom and dad's? Yeah. You know how that is. You'll be upstairs and you hear them call your name. You go downstairs and nobody's there. Mm -hmm. You're like, I know I heard my name out loud in my ears. And then you look stupid because they're like, what is wrong with you? I'll be like, I heard you all holler at me. Right. Mm -hmm. I've had like, experiences like Nobody's that. home. I had, That's I know Jen knows about this, but I had, I woke up one night out of just sleeping, instant woke up. And I saw probably a six to seven foot black shadow figure leaning over me. And I knew it was a guy. He had one hand on the bed, and he was just, like, looking at me. And I just woke up and stared at it for a few seconds, and it vanished. And I spent the last hour looking around the room. I went, okay, what shadow could this be? But I swear it was a person. like a, And he was so big, he was, like, bent over, and he was still touching the ceiling. Wow. Just looking down at me. Yeah. You know? I think people like me, they're, you know, has got a lot of health problems, sick, you know, got one foot in the grave and the other one's still in an airplane of existence. I, I think they're drawn to a lot of people like me because of the fact that they know, well, he, you know, he's sick. Things are not going well, you know, let's, let's surprise him a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Give him a little spooky, spooky. <laughs> <laughs> Give you a little scared to see they're like nope he's still there he's still there damn it wait till we get him on our side and, and, oh and, and, my god they're gonna hate me when i come behind the veil i'm gonna come out butt naked i ain't gonna be like all these other ghosts yeah and why are the ghosts ghost dressed that's it bury me naked bury me dude <laughs> i just hope i don't die at work so i'm not spending the rest of eternity wearing the smelly oily clothing yeah, that was up. <laughs> that was up. Don't die in the shower either, because then all your every time somebody ghost hunts you, you're like, yeah. What is it with all the ghosts with the bathroom? Have, have you watched that on YouTube? All the no, it's no, the I portals. Oh, what'd you say? The mirrors are portals. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, what's yeah, up and with they turning say, on the shower? Are they dirty? They need to take a shower. Water, water can is is conductive. So mm -hmm. if you want, you know, move quickly. Uh, I'd be a ghost, be going, "Woo wee!" I can't feel a damn thing, but boy, mm, just the thought <laughs> of it. Yeah, they're clean <laughs> ghosts, at least. Oh yeah. What do you? Have you ever heard of like people saying you shouldn't have a TV in your bedroom because it's like 
the black screen is like a portal. Yeah, I've heard that. And I've well, heard where a lot of people have a TV in their bedroom mm -hmm. tend to have a lot of paranormal experiences in their bedroom. Yeah. I've never heard that one. I got TV in my bedroom, but I don't watch it hardly. I mean, yeah. I'm one of these people I don't eat in the bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't watch TV in the bed because what's the point? I turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> It yeah. just wastes electricity to me. <laughs> yeah. Or you're laying there looking at your phone and you fall asleep and it hits you on the head. Yeah. I break my I, nose. I, I've dropped my phone so much. I'm just like, oh my gosh. Well, see, I'm starting to have trouble with my hands now. Oh. I think, I think I've got oh. neuropathy or something. Mm. They're tingling. They're cold. They're hot. I can't hold on to nothing. I can't type. I have to finger punch the damn keyboards now i went to the doctor i was going i went up to the doctor up here in princeton west virginia and and, and west virginia the COVID is really really bad no, no. stupid people and i told amy i said when i walked in i said i guarantee you people ain't wearing a mask in here as soon as i walked in uh, there's probably about 30 people. You might have five people wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. None of the staff was wearing masks. Nurses, none of them. At I a got, doctor's office? Yes. And they even had signs up, wear a mask. I got so damn mad. We went in the corner and I sat and I stewed and stewed and stewed <laughs> for about an hour. Then they had, you know, told me to come in. And this way, I seen that the nurse didn't have a mask on and that just I said on a little bit for a minute and I was like, fuck it. I walked out. I said, I, I ain't getting the COVID dying from this place. No. That's crazy. It is. Uh, especially yeah. a doctor's office. I mean, come on. Yeah. And here you got people coughing and snotting and stuff. And, you know, I, I and I've got the, uh, what are they, P92, whatever, man, the super yeah. duper. Yeah. I've got that. Hell, I'm about ready to go into the doctor's office in a bio suit. People keep this shit up. <laughs> you almost have to if you want to stay, you know, COVID free. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, Ronnie, I'm going to have to let you go. I need to get uh, ready for bed. Johnny's so, is beauty sleep. Beauty sleep. Well, it's working. Yeah. It's working. Yeah. It Look, at that. Look at that face. Sexy. Yeah, I'll, I'll some, but, of some shortages got it, and some don't. I didn't. didn't. It's because I got that Johnson gene in me. I told mom she fucked up. My, I told mom she fucked up my whole bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hey, all thanks for doing the live with us. We oh, you're welcome. It. Always good I to see you know. and hear from you. It's great you. seeing you all. Glad right. everybody's doing all right. Miss you. I mean, I mean, I actually do miss your show. Oh, I'm gonna have you to on YouTube right. and watch some videos of it. I I I, I kind of miss it sometimes, but mm -hmm. you know, it it just wore me out. I know it's just one show a week, but yeah, you know, I really delve deep. I try to delve deep in the. <laughs> different topics i was in and mm -hmm. I, I, i'd sit here with a damn paper 30 pages of questions to ask within an hour yeah or two and i'm like jesus christ i gotta get this one i gotta get this one yeah. or, you know when someone says something that draws you somewhere else you know uh -huh. like I do. oh yeah yeah for sure yeah so, lying down the rabbit holes huh <laughs> yeah i i might I, you know amy's trying to talk me into doing it again i might you know it's still there uh, they tell me anytime I want to come back, I can. So. Yeah. It's a hobby. It is a, ho it's, it's it. a hobby, but it's a lot of work. Like the star show. I mean, we put so much em effort into the show, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it, it pays off for us. You know, it's something we enjoy. And, but well, I'm glad y'all are still doing it. I yeah. Thank you. 292 episodes so far. Oh, wow. So, yep. <laughs> setting them up and knocking them down. I actually have someone in mind that I'm going to contact, and uh, if we get him on, it'll be really it'll be a shock for a lot of people. He's not a paranormal investigator, that, but he's pretty famous, so I'm working on him. 
I can't well, talk. I, tell you, I don't even people, know. Those famous <laughs> people are hard to get them. Come on, boy. I know I've tried. Yeah. Like like Hancock. I tried to get Hancock on. He's like he actually responded. Yeah. He he told me he said you know I due to his you know schedule work schedule and traveling he just really didn't have the time. Mm -hmm. But at least he was nice enough to you know some people won't even send you a reply back like oh, oh yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. So all right, well thanks Rodney. It was great seeing you. Oh thank um, you. Thank you. And you know, we're always, we're always here for you if you need it for anything, even though we can't drive down. There. It's a eight and a half hour drive, but <laughs> it's a long drive. If you ever need someone to talk to or anything, you know, we're here. Okay. Yep. Well, I, I appreciate it. Hey, yeah. Y'all have a good one. And thanks you. Again. All right. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye, cousin. Bye, <laughs> cousins. <laughs>